So in Luke chapter 2, verse 49, everybody pay attention. Everybody pay attention. I've been here a lot of talking. Let's pay attention to the message, y'all. Listen, I done went through some things to get this message put together. So let's pay attention. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 49 says, and this is Jesus talking, and he said to them, why do you seek me? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? And when Jesus said this, this is actually Jesus's first public statement in the Bible. And he was 12 years old when he said it. Right. And at 12 years old, he already knew his why. He knew that his life was to be about his father's business. Um, got another scripture for you. In John chapter 5, verse 17, Jesus said, in his defense, Jesus said to them, my father is always at work to this very day, and I too am working. John 5, 17. So he was basically saying, Jesus was saying at this time that God is always working. God the father is always working. And he's like, and I too am working. And when he said this was when he had actually healed somebody on the Sabbath, which was a rule in the Bible. Like it was at that time, you, you're not supposed to heal or do any work on the Sabbath. But he was basically explaining his why, you know, that I'm about my father's business and my business is to help people. And that's basically him explaining what his why was. So what is your why? When I think about my why. I don't know if you guys, if everybody probably hasn't heard my testimony, but um, so I gave my life to the Lord years ago. And when I gave my life to the Lord, I really kind of had a split mentality at the time. I was like part business, part streets. When I say that I was, I came up in the magazine business and I was really successful. Um, but I used to have a tendency to take off into the streets and just cause ruckus at times and run them up, hustle, do all the shady, bad stuff. I just was addicted to it, really. Um, so I kind of had a split personality a little bit. I was either going hard in business or I was going hard in the street. Um, but either which way it goes, when I gave my life to the Lord, I decided at that time that my life is going to be about the Lord. So that everything about my life from now on, God is my boss. You know, God is my shot caller, you know, that he's the one that I'm going to give my salute to. Right. And that my life's no longer going to be about me, but it's going to be about God and then other people. Right. So that's really where my why was established. Now, there's been a lot of things that have happened over the years um, that have brought me to where I'm at today. But my why hasn't changed. I've just learned how to represent better, you know, because when I, I when I first figured out why I had to figure out how <laughs> as well, because I understood why, but how I was going to get to represent myself for that. Why there was a lot of different things I needed to learn and there's still things I need to learn. But my why is to serve God. My why is to be a good representation of the father. That's that's where I, I'm coming from. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, steal no more, but work hard with your own hands so that you'll have enough to take care of yourself and enough to give to those in need. Right. So there's another that's like a really big part of my why. Right. There was a time I actually did use to steal like I did criminal stuff and I actually literally stole. And some people will say, yeah, well, I never really stole. Most people probably have stolen something at some time. But, but I could say, yeah, but you have stole from God in other ways. You stole by not be doing your best or by being, you know, uh, less than what you thought you should be and knew you could be and stuff. So we've, we've all robbed God in some one way, shape or form. So I think that scripture has a lot of relevance and it should be in all of our lives. Steal no more. But work hard with your own hands so that you'll have enough to provide for yourself and enough to provide for those in need. I can't tell you how many times I would recite that scripture. When I first got in this business, I used to have to haul them phones and tablets back and forth from, from Prescott. I'm talking about picking boxes up all the time. 
putting them in the back of the truck, driving, going to FedEx, picking up boxes. I used to recite that scripture in my mind, though. I'd be like, I'm glorifying God right now while I'm grinding because I'm working hard with my own hands, you know, so I could provide for myself and also so I could take care of my family. So I would meditate on that verse a lot, even in this business. Times when I'd be out at the tent, super dirty. You don't even know how many J's I done messed up out of those tents. But, I mean, just getting dirty, grimy, done put in so many orders throughout the day that my thoughts, my brain hurts, you know, and I'd be thinking to myself, I'm glorifying God because I'm working a legitimate job and I'm working hard so that I can provide for myself and I, so I could have something to share with those in need, right? And... And while I'm working, I'm thinking about integrity and doing things the right way and not doing things that are shady. And like you guys were talking about, having patience with people. There's been many times that I've, even while I was working, been at a crossroad of feeling like doing something one type of way, but I decided to do it a way that would glorify God because I understand my why. I know why I'm doing what I'm doing. So what is your why? You know, I would suggest getting the same why as I got. Honestly, I would say everybody should get the same exact why that I got. Everybody. Because my why is universal. I believe that anyone, the Bible says that anybody that, that calls on the name of the Lord could be saved. Anybody could call on Jesus' name and have the same why that I have. So I always talk about that. Um, so Jesus' first public words, he was 12 years old. You should have knew that I was about my father's business. Um, interesting enough. So I shared some good news with you guys the other day, and I told you that I was in the middle of dealing with some new contracting, right? So I was blessed enough to take uh, this gentleman out to, uh, where we go to lunch at? Capitol Grill. Y'all know where that's at? Nice. It's like a really nice restaurant. I think I went there. Did we go there with Junior? Yeah, Junior and Shanda, we went there before. Um, but it's a really nice five-star restaurant. It might be $100 a plate, you know, something like that. It's a nice place. But I suggested to this person in contracting to meet me there because I was standing there when I was talking to him the other day, and I was, like, trying to think of where I could meet him at, and we met there. And once again, when it was time to eat, I was I was privileged to say, Hey, sir, do you mind if I say a blessing for the food? And he's like, nah, go ahead. So I was able to let that be known right up front. You know, in my in my contracting, brand new deal, brand new deal that's going to open up to a lot of new deals. And I was able to go ahead and establish right up front where I'm coming from, what my why is. So, and I was able to talk about, so once I did that, and then once I said other things, like how much we value integrity in this company and how much we want to do the right thing and do a good job and stuff like that, I felt like I was testifying, really, according to my faith, because once I done prayed with him in Jesus' name, now I'm talking about doing a good job, and so I felt like he could understand where I was coming from. So again, my why. And that's happened not just this time, but a lot of times recently dealing with contracting. I've been able to represent my faith and talk about things that mean a lot to me. And we've been blessed because of it. I want to read something else to you guys. This right here. So I'm going to read these verses to you guys. If you're brand new here, uh, some of my uh, messages are a lot just talking about business, but you're going to hear a lot about God. Uh, sometimes I talk, sometimes it's like I'm preaching a sermon. I'm just going to be real with you. Um, but I'm basically sharing with people what's helped me elevate in my life and become the person that I am and what's challenging me to continue to become a better person as I walk this thing out. Uh, this scripture says, check this out. I really like this. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he has given you. 
the Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on oath, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him. Then all the people on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground. In the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but will borrow from none. By the way, I'm all the way straight on my credit. I don't know nobody, nothing. And I actually, people do borrow money from me. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I will give you this day and carefully follow them, they will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you to the day, to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. And then uh, it goes on to actually give a warning for the opposite. Like if you, if you want to be disobedient, then all this bad stuff can happen. So I'm not even going to go into that because I ain't going that way. You understand what I'm saying? What is this, um, this is Deuteronomy 28.6 through uh, 14. But yeah, so and I was reading that this morning and I was just thinking about how true it is. Uh, because God has blessed this company, you guys. We have literally done the most. We always got plentiful. Uh, even in all of our contracting, we could order inventory and get whatever we want. We got plentiful deals. We always get everything on time. We get prepaid in this office, like all kinds of crazy over the top stuff. Right. And it's because I've submitted everything to God. That's why. It's literally why. 100 percent. No questioning whatsoever. The relationship that I have with my wife is something I can brag about all day. But her and I, when we got together, I told her straight up, my life, I'm going to be serving Jesus. And if you're interested in doing that with me, we could we could rock together. And so guess what? She was she said she was interested in that. So we haven't been perfect. But when we began our relationship, we began with a plan to serve God together. Right. And so even going into business, we have not been sidetracked whatsoever. Our plan is to work hard and to serve the Lord and to bless people. And since we've been able to work with, you know, through Headed Straight Up Consulting, we've been able to continuously do just that. And so God's continuing to just bless us back to back to back to back. So, and it's so interesting because... Even right now, while this stuff's going on with the ACP, once again, we're in a great situation. Don't you know that the other, like it was a few nights ago, I was actually praying and I've had some very sincere prayers before, even that has got me to where I'm at in this company. I've had very sincere prayers where I literally prayed about something and I know it's God that answered the prayer. But there was a few nights ago. And I was sitting on my couch and I was talking to God because I, I got a friend that talks about how God tells him secrets. And so I was like, I was talking to God. I was like, God, you know all the information in the entire world and you have all the connections. Like, so tell me, Lord, I feel in my heart like I need to open up some other avenues and head straight up consulting. So plug me in, God. Connect me with the right people. Show me what the right situation is that's going to be best for everybody involved. And don't you know, within a couple hours of that, I was connected to an opportunity. That's right. Literally. And when I said it, I was saying a prayer like I was literally telling God, when you do this, I'm going to know it's you because I'm asking right now. And once it happens, I'm not going to forget that I asked you and you did it. I'm not going to be pretending it might have just been some kind of coincidence or something. Because that's what people do. Sometimes I'll pray for people. They'll get healed. And then they'll act like they didn't even realize that it had something to do with the prayer. 
I watch somebody get a financial breakthrough or whatever. They'll, literally, we pray for something. The answer to the prayer will come, and I will watch the person doubt in their mind and think that by some coincidence it happened. Nah, God blessed you. God blessed you. And you got to have faith, and you got to acknowledge that. You want God to keep blessing you? Acknowledge him. Uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, listen, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. It's just, it is what it is. In all your ways, acknowledge him. That means every part of your life. That's how you get the blessing. You acknowledge him in every part of your life. 